family. It's my pleasure to be able to bring you the Elders Update for July 17th, 2020, Linda Road Church of Christ. I'll start off with a few announcements and then have a devotional thought. Uh, first off, our drive-in service will be this Sunday at uh, 10 a.m. We'd encourage you, if you're going to participate in that, to uh, get parked over on the south parking lot area in plenty of time uh, before services start so we can get settled in and, and ready to go. Uh, as a reminder, we'd ask that you would bring your own communion supplies. If that's a challenge for you, we will have some offered and you can take advantage of that by pulling in the north side of the parking lot over by the Maverick and pulling around to the overhang at the front entrance. There'll be some gentlemen there that can provide you with those supplies and they'll do so in a socially distanced way you don't even need to get out of your vehicle. You can just pick those up and continue on to the south parking lot to park. Uh, we'd like to remind everybody, if you do want to actually view the services as you're attending that drive-in service, you'll need your phone or iPad. Our IT guys are wonderful, but they can't really put a video out over the FM dial. So if you're doing just the FM, that'll be for uh, hearing sound only and not video. The elders would like to communicate at this time that uh, this drive-in service will probably be kind of a one-off thing for the next foreseeable future due to the spike that we have in the cases uh, around our county. Uh, with all that going on, we just think it's going to be best to uh, again resume with the online services and uh, continue to see what all the variables are with the caseloads and what's happening with that before we make more plans as far as coming together. Uh, so please bear with us in that. We know you've been very patient and we appreciate that, but we're working towards the safety of, of everyone involved here. Uh, we'd also ask as a congregation, if you could, make sure you're checking in on church teams. Uh, let us know that you're uh, attending uh, the service and uh, also uh, any functions that are available to check in for classes. Please remember to do that and uh, make that a notation and that helps us out knowing what the participation in, that is going on is. Uh, and towards that end, we know that some are having uh, still some difficulties with some of the church team app and, and how to use that. So we are going to have a uh, card made up. It'll be small laminated card that will be mailed to everyone. And this will give us just a quick rundown of the various uh, commands that can be sent by text, the response that you can expect from the text that will come back to you, and then how to punch into that and fill everything out. Uh, that's basically it for announcements. Uh, my devotional thought today, it's something that's just been on my mind. I've got to ask, how are you doing with all the hunkering down and the isolation that we're having to put up with? Uh, you might be tired of, if you're like me, of even talking about it, hearing about it, hearing what the next phase is, where I'm going to have to wear masks and, and the whole thing. But with the case numbers that are spiking around us at this time, I think it's just something that we're going to have to recognize as a reality of life, that we have more of this to deal with. And it seems like more of this isolation we're going to have to work through. You know, I'd... Uh, been very blessed that I've got a large family uh, here in town and we're all hunkered down together and that's kind of a mixed blessing at times but uh, we get through it but uh, there's brothers and sisters here that, that don't have family in town and um, that can can wear on people this this isolated feeling after a while and I'd like to explore that for a minute in our devotional thought as an aside, I'd like to also let you know the, the elders are concerned about this isolation. You know, we take our, our charge to shepherd the flock here uh, very seriously. And it sometimes feels as if we're almost trying to, uh, you know, figuratively look over the flock while wearing a blindfold. That interaction that we had with you on a, a per week basis multiple times is uh, a lot of ways it's gone. We don't see everybody around all the time like we used to. So we're feeling that isolation from that aspect and being able to uh, serve the congregation and work from that, that aspect. 
So we covet your prayers, uh, both for our decisions and the leadership, but just in, in the ways going forward. You know, when we are separated, it makes us feel sometimes like we're on an island, we're all alone. And uh, that's nothing new. If you want to turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 1, uh, we'll be reading uh, from the verses there, starting in verse 3. And it's interesting here because this is Paul talking, but he's talking about an Old Testament event. And he's telling the uh, congregation there at Rome about feeling that God has deserted them. And he references them back to Elijah. At this time, Elijah has made his stand against the prophets of Baal and the king who is trying to promote Baal worship. But he's hiding out because he's fearful for his life. And rightly so, because they've killed off a lot of the prophets already. He says there in Romans 11.3, and this is Paul recounting what Elijah is saying, Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have demolished your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what is God's reply to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Now that's a, a number that kind of, I think, loses perspective for us maybe. 7,000 nowadays doesn't seem like a lot. But back in his time, that would have been a very significant number to tell him that this many of your fellow countrymen are have not turned and followed the uh, false uh, gods that the king is, is trying to force them to do. So that should be a great encouragement to, to Elijah there. So are we under such persecution? No, we're not near that. I mean, we're not living in caves. Um, but we are separated. We're kept apart. We don't have the same ability to, to meet together and gain strength like we did before. But what does God say to Elijah? Tell him you're not alone. There are others out there. What's our takeaway from that? Can you imagine if Elijah had a cell phone in his day, uh, an iPad, whatever you want, any, any available way to do messaging, to make that contact? That would have been a huge encouragement for him. Are you being an encourager? How are you using the means that you have available to contact other people? Uh, it goes beyond just checking in on church teams and letting other people know, yeah, you're we're not isolated. We're all here worshiping God as we can. We're attending classes. We're putting input as we can in the socially distanced way. But more than that, are you calling people? Are you checking in with them, seeing how they're doing, being that encourager? We've had some great uh, lessons on what it means to be an encourager, and what it means to be like Barnabas, and what that means to every one of us. We all can use that. And we all can be a blessing to one another if we give that. That's what I'd like to encourage you to do. Uh, so the lesson's yours as far as that goes. But uh, again, we want you to know we love you. We hope things are going well for you and your families and all of this. If you have any need, please let us know for either from the normal channels. There's a prayer request that you can tune in on. Uh, uh, tune in. Get in on the app for church teams, and you can put that prayer request in that one. Or call us, any of the elders. Our numbers are, are there. Or you can get them from Lori at the building, and uh, she'll, she'll let you know. Whatever need you have, let us know. We want to be in contact with you. We want to know how things are going in your life. Okay. Well, we love you. God bless you today, and take care.